Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's a treat to be back here worshiping with you, and I pray that our time together will be one that will be good for all of you. Our call to worship is a responsive call to worship. And uh, see it on the screen. <clears throat> Death, failure, fear, and all works of evil have been defeated in Easter, for Christ is risen. God reigns supreme in creation, absolute on power, merciful and forgiveness, and gracious and love. With humility, need, and expectancy, let us praise and worship the one who calls and receives us, the one who lifts up the fallen, restores hopes to those despairing, and strengthens the weak. Let us have a of God. Church, 
Make us always faithful to him, for him throughout our lives. Holy God, we confess the pride that believes we should never fail, never have to endure failure. But we admit that, as with our Israelite ancestors, we have broken covenant with you over and over again. When we have found ourselves lost in the desert, far from the promised land of our hopes and dreams, we have railed against you, believing that you failed us, when in truth we failed you. We failed to be obedient to your will, failed to notice the signs of your presence, to be open to your correction and comfort, strength and guidance, failed to wait for and trust your timing and way of deliverance. At such moments, we confess we have forgotten that you have won for us a decisive Easter victory, forgotten that in the power of the Spirit of Christ, we can stand against evil and the controlling powers of this world. Forgive us in our failures and set us free to know that we can begin again for you are with us. This we ask in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Though we fail countless times, God does not fail or forsake us. God comes to all who sorrow for sin to forgive and restore, to love and to strengthen for the living of a transformed life by the power of the indwelling Christ. Thanks and praise be to God. Now I see it's the passing of the peace. So. <laughs> Are there any announcements this morning? Uh, Bible study tomorrow. Bible study tomorrow. Right. You all yeah. here? Bible, Bible study, study tomorrow? Bible study tomorrow. Back to the morning. Okay. As we prepare to hear the words of Scripture, let us pray. Dear God, as we listen to your word to us, the accounts of Christ's disciples, witnesses to the resurrection, open our hearts that we may increase in faith and believe that with you anything is possible. Amen.
On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where, his na where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later, the <coughs> disciples were in the house again, and Thomas <coughs> was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Thanks be to God for this reading. Mark, do you want to do the second hymn before the sermon? Sounds good. <laughs> Uh, 452. 452. You just stand for a moment. Thoughts. 
she turned and found herself face to face with Paul Newman. He politely suggested to her that if she was looking for her comb, she might look in her purse. <laughs> when Paul Newman showed up, he had an amazing impact on that lady. Famous people have quite an impact on us. But what about Jesus, the Son of God? When he shows up, should he have an impact on our lives? Consider the impact of Jesus on history. Someone has pointed out that Socrates taught for 40 years, Plato for 50, Aristotle for another 40, yet Jesus only three. But the influence of Christ's three-year ministry is greater than the combined impact left by the combined 130 years of teaching from these three men who were considered to be the greatest of philosophers. Now, Jesus painted no pictures, yet some of the finest paintings of all time, you know, of Raphael, Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, received their inspiration from him. Jesus wrote no poetry. Yet Dante, Milton, and many more of the world's greatest poets were inspired by him. And he composed no music. Still Handel, Hayden, Beethoven, Bach, and Mendelssohn reached their highest perfection in <coughs> melody in the music they composed in his praise. Every sphere of human greatness is enriched by Christ. Jesus has influenced the world, and he wants to influence our lives. What happens when Jesus shows up in your life? In our Gospel reading for today, we saw that when Jesus showed up, everything was different. And what was that difference? Well, before explaining that difference, I'll mention three simple rules. Jesus shows up when things are helpless. Remember the old saying, it's always darkest, just before the dawn. Two, Jesus shows up because he understands the struggles we're facing. And three, he shows up before, because he cares. And up across the street from the bogged out federal building in Oklahoma City, where 168 people died needlessly and senselessly, stands a memorial. And then the center of that memorial is a statue, a statue of Jesus. But this statue is not a stony Jesus with arms outstretched, you know, like you see uh, in Brazil or in the hills. No, this is a nine-foot statue of Jesus with his face in his hands, turned slightly away from where the axe a character place. And the inscription says, and he wept. At times, you know, my friends, things might seem hopeless. However, Jesus understands and cares about us. He will make a difference when he shows up. And what difference will he make? Well, one, for one thing, when Jesus shows up, he'll bring you peace. Twice in the Gospel reading for today, Jesus, Jesus promises his disciples peace. And peace isn't something that comes from positive uh, thinking. Peace isn't something you can buy at Walmart. Peace doesn't come from a pill, although people, many people think so. Peace, my friends, is a gift from God. Jesus said, my peace I give to you. Think about it. There was an occasion on the Sea of Galilee when the uh, disciples were caught in a vicious storm. And Jesus was asleep in the boat. The disciples cried out, don't you care that we're perishing? 
And Jesus spoke to the storm as if it were a puppet. He said, a puppet. He said, peace be still. He brought peace to that situation. And you know, peace is a gift that protects our hearts. In his letter to the Philippians, Paul wrote, or shows his truth when he writes, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. When Jesus, or when Paul said that the peace of God will guard your heart and mind, he was using a military term. He was basically describing a soldier standing guard. And, he tell, and this tells us that God stands there, he stands guard over troubled souls. When Jesus shows up, He'll bring you a new perspective. Until the resurrection appearances, Jesus' disciples were confused. They didn't understand, nor did they believe the stories that were being circulated. Some people were spreading rumors that Jesus was still alive. Notice what happened in verse 20. He showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad that they sought the Lord. That simple act gave the disciples a whole new perspective. They knew that Jesus had been crucified. They knew that his body had been placed in the tomb. However, now they had a new way of looking at these events. Jesus' disciples, you know, had been struggling with disillusionment and were really defeat upon seeing Jesus they realized that death is not the end several years ago a scholar by the name of Dr. Harry River had a friendly discussion with a Muslim teacher in which he compared her things and Dr. River has said we believe that God has, spoke, uh, has spoken to us in a book, the Bible. And the Muslims say, so do we. We believe that God has spoken to us in the book also, in the Quran. Remember, then said, we believe that God visited this planet in the person of Jesus Christ. And the Muslim teacher said, yeah. We believe that God revealed himself in the prophet Muhammad. Remember then said, we believe that Jesus Christ died, died for his people. The Muslim teacher replied, we believe that Muhammad died for his people. Remember then added, we believe that Jesus proved his claim of coming back from the grave. The Muslim teacher replied, we have no record of our prophet after his death. You know, during my ministry, I did a number of funerals for loved ones of people uh, who attended my churches, and sometimes who were in other churches. And most of the time, the families and these people went away in hope because they believed that their loved one had a personal, a personal relationship with Christ. And that's what I mean by perspective. When Jesus shows up, he gives us a new perspective. In verse 21 of our gospel reading for today, Jesus says, As Jesus has sent me, I also send you. And notice the transformation that takes place in the disciples. Until that moment, Jesus' disciples were frozen. They were hidden in a room. They were afraid. They had been neutralized into ineffectiveness. When Jesus showed up, well, he lit a 
fire unto his disciples. He gave them a reason to be alive. They went from being weak, vacillating men to being men of God who shook the world. According to church history and tradition, most of the disciples died a martyr's death. And you know, my friends, a person won't lay down their life unless they found something that they believe in. And when Jesus shows up, he gives you a new power. Verse 22 says, when he has said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. The new power is the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in all believers. The Holy Spirit gives us power over weaknesses. We don't have the power within ourselves to live the Christian life. The Holy Spirit helps us with our struggles. Think of it. A good example of this is found in a disciple named Peter. Peter is seen as a man facing a number of personal uh, struggles when walking with Christ. He was impulsive. He opened his mouth and impulsively spoke the first thing that came to mind. He was arrogant. He proudly proclaimed that he would never leave Jesus. However, how quickly he turned away when the pressure was on. Jesus took the rough diamond of a man and eventually made him a jewel of tremendous value in God's service. Jesus Christ gives us, through the Holy Spirit, the power to live a victorious Christian life. Yes, my friends, we can't do that on our own strength. We don't have it, and we don't have it within us to live a Christian life. It's the Holy Spirit that gives us that potential. In the seventh chapter of the Gospel according to John, we find a promise there that recorded that Jesus made to his disciples. The following is written. Out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about his spirit, which believers in him were to receive. For as yet there was no spirit, but because Jesus was not yet glorified. Notice what Jesus had said. When the Holy Spirit is given, a believer will have rivers of living water. And you know, a river has power. A river gives energy. And you and I need that kind of power and energy. In conclusion, Jesus is here right now. And it's my sincere prayer that all of you will allow him to show up in your lives and allow him to have his way with you. That way you will indeed become victorious Christians. Amen. And now to God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, all honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Let us once again come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Anticipating God, we speak with you in prayer this day, respecting your integrity, remembering your dependability, recalling your capability to achieve whatever you set your sights to do. You are not a God who fails. You have shown us this in Jesus. We thank you that the worst the powers of evil in the world could do did not cause you to fail, nor thwart your plan to del deliver humanity from bondage. We thank you for the gift of, of your presence and the Holy Spirit in the midst of all that we experience in life. We thank you that when we huddle together behind closed doors, whether in shame, discouragement, or fear, Christ comes to us to bring assurance, hope, and a light of a new reality. 
Loving God, we pray for healing for those who have suffered abuse, for those who have lost self-esteem and hope. We pray for deliverance for those paralyzed by fear, unable to risk another failure. And for the gift of faith in your forgiveness for those who feel defeated by their own sin, those who feel that they cannot begin again. Lord God, we pray for ourselves, for steadfast faith in your power to complete what you intend to establish in peace. We pray that we remember that you never consider us to be failures, even though we may fail you. And for the courage to face your failures and the grace to forgive those who fail us. All these thanksgiving and petitions we bring to you in the name of our triumphant Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our risen Lord has appeared to his disciples, wanting them to continue his work in the world. As his present day disciples, let us present our tithes and offerings with the faith that these will be used in furthering Christ's work. possibility, raising up Christ to be among us with healing power, equipping us with the gift of the Holy Spirit to share in your victory. Receive, bless, and use these gifts, and use us for your reclaiming purposes. In Jesus' name, Amen. And our closing hymn is hymn 352. And can it be that I should be?
the world to do your ministries, willing to risk and to face the reality of failure as part of living your life in this world. Go with a certain knowledge that Christ of Easter is with you in victorious power to forgive and to speak peace in your souls. And may the blessing of God, the creative word, the undefeated Christ, and the encouraging spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.